Well, I'm going to throw this to Eric Hindu. Holmes. We have, oh, we have three movies for our featured uh, this week. We have Americazzi, we have Good Boy, and we have Megalomaniac. Eric Holmes, you get the choice. What do you want to cover first? Uh, let's not bury the lead. Let's go with Americazzi. Americazzi. Yeah, this is, oh, wow. This is, uh, where do I start, Bruce? I'm trying to think. Where do I start with Americazzi? This is an epic film. It centers on an American and he's not, he's an immigrant to America and it's set in 1948, a couple of decades. He fled Armenia to the U S as a child due to, I believe the Armenian genocide. And he saved at that moment as he actually immigrates to America years later in 1948, the Soviets are allowing Armenians back into Back into their area for sort of a, I, I don't know, what is it? It's not to claim property, uh, but to... Soviet Armenia, it was uh, repatriate. Um, ex, they're they're ex repatriates, so they're repatriates, I guess. Yeah, the repatriates and yeah. it's sort of a way to actually reintegrate themselves to that society, to that environment. The problem is for this American, this immigrant American, his name is Charlie, played by Michael A. Gorgian. I am hope I hope I don't pronounce some more names this episode. I was already horrible with the Shiva baby situation. Um, you do have to pronounce the director of Memoria for me later, though. Oh, that's okay. your responsibility. <laughs> I will try that, Bruce. Okay, Michael A. Gorgian. He is a screenwriter and director and lead, the star of this movie. He plays Charlie. He's American. His wife has passed. He's lived a life in America. Now, probably in his early 50s, early 40s, he decides to actually settle down in in this in, in Russia in you know under Soviet rule because of this whole like you said Eric the repatriates what uh, re, being a he wants to be a repatriate right that yeah I, th I think the idea was that uh so uh, the Soviet Union and, and according to the movie from what I gathered the Soviet Union took over Armenia uh but they're trying to bring Armenians back to uh Soviet Armenia and uh the looks of this movie probably not the greatest <laughs> No, it is not the greatest the, idea. The greatest idea? It's not the greatest idea, Eric, because eventually Charlie is immediately thrown into, into prison for a either a misunderstanding or a corrupt situation. There is the what is, what is that obvious phrase? No good deed goes unpunished. He actually there is a crowd of Armenians trying to get bread in a line with a truck, and there's a little kid in the way, and he helps the kid, and he, everything's fine. He, by helping that little kid, the kid's mother is Armenian. He bonds with the kid and the mother. Unfortunately. The Armenian woman's husband is a high-ranking Soviet officer. The Soviet officer eventually, through his machinations and just through just a horrible act, he decides to throw this good Samaritan Charlie into jail. And the rest of the movie deals with how he tries to persevere through his existence from jail. The one way that is sort of the heartbeat of his existence is at he's sort of at the top section of the jail and he can see over the crumbling walls of the prison a uh, an Armenian man and woman living out their lives in an apartment. That Armenian man is coincidentally the one of the uh, officers in the prison. He mans the guard tower, and you can see it's sort of a a little bit of a vertigo reference, sort of a voyeuristic situation. You see, sort of two movies rolled into one. You see him observing their lives, as well as you get to see his life in prison. It runs at 117 minutes. The languages are Armenian, English, and Russian. Some may say that this might be a long movie because it's almost close to two hours. For me, did not feel long whatsoever. I thought it was actually flew by because the story was really well executed. Love the character of Charlie and the people around the prison. And I just really enjoyed how this story unfolded. I think this is one of our biggest finds this year over at Cinematics. I don't know if you concur, Bruce Perky. What did you think of Americazzi? Yeah, I really like this movie a lot. But at first, I was kind of thrown off balance. And I think that's be kind of my warning going into this movie. At first, I just wasn't sure about the tone of this movie. Because because the music, the music, for example, very vibrant, like very, very vibrant. I mean, it's it's lush and full. And, and sometimes it's kind of almost comedic. And at first, I was like, what the heck is this music? This music seems so dissonant to this kind of gray prison movie. Uh, but then as I kind of sunk into the tone and the feel of this movie, uh, it really worked for me and it became more and more evocative for me. So I think that would be kind of my, my, I guess my, my warning up front would be 
stick with it a little bit. I think also this is going to get a lot of people saying life is beautiful. Oh, this is just life is beautiful in Armenia. And I don't think that's really fair either because I think they do different things where life is beautiful is, you know, this very comedic character trying to make things fun in a very horrible situation for his kid trying to hide his kid from the realities and kind of to, to mask everything. Whereas this is much different. I think this character of Charlie, he's almost more uh, at the start, I would say just naive. Like he's just naive and he's kind of like the ultimate American, right? Like, ah, yes, you know, everyone's going to want to just do things like I want to do them. I want to come here and find out about my, my, you know, my heritage and I'll just talk to people. They're sure they're Stalinist Russians. What are they going to not have a like to hear me talk about things in ties and <laughs> neckties and, uh, and he just is really, really not aware of how he, how, first of all, the bureaucracy and just the arbitrary nature of the Stalinist bureaucracy can just in a whim almost make him a prisoner for years and years and years and years. And you mentioned Vertigo. I kept thinking Rear Window. I don't know if that's what you made me mention oh, Rear Window. that's my fault. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I was thinking Rear Window some of the time, but if Rear Window was like... So like if Jimmy Stewart, instead of having his cast on, was literally, you know, encaged in his apartment and his whole meaning of life depended upon all those people across the way. But in this case, there's only the one. And I think there's so many magical things in this movie. There's some really awesome ways that communication is attempted between the outside and the inside world. There's also the use of art is really interesting in this. Yes. And the whole point of him was coming to Armenia was to learn about Armenian culture and how that plays into this is very, very interesting. I think this is a fantastic movie and it's a fantastic prison movie of its own type. I think some people might be disappointed because it doesn't have kind of a lot of the uh, usual prison tropes, although it has a few of them, but it's very, I mean, a lot of people could complain, oh, it's a guy looking out a window <laughs> because it kind of is, <laughs> but the stakes are so amazing in this movie. And just for example, how much in this movie were you two hoping and praying that that wall never got repaired? I know I was. <laughs> yes, right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I cannot, I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly recommend this movie. This is a movie you can recommend to a lot of people. And I think a lot of people maybe wouldn't go out and watch it. And I think uh, this reminds me of another find from this year, which was Love, Love Finds a Room, Love Gets a Room. I forget which one. Love it was. Gets a Room. Yes, Bruce. Yeah. And both war movies of, of a sort, but both kind of different and both finding an interesting joy and lyricism and like real motion in those moments. And I think those two movies are two big finds that kind of work together. Oh, and it's heartbreaking because you're saying finds and I think one of the things we don't want to shove movies down people's throats, but we just hope and pray that movies like Love Gets Room and Americazzi really does find a much larger audience, especially I'm sure even the diehard cinephiles may even not may ignore this movie. I don't know. But this movie, again, Americazzi comes out on Friday, September 8th at New York Squad Cinema and L.A.'s AMC Glendale. Eric, I'm sure you're hoping that this actually has a wider reach. Let me hear your thoughts on Americazzi. Yeah, um, I will uh, echo the rear window. It's very much like rear window. I would also throw in like it's got like the heart and kind of edge of Shawshank Redemption. That's got a lot of that, too. Man, this movie's great. Um, By the I've way, never... I was wearing a Vertigo shirt and I, apolog I apologize for that. <laughs> and that's why I horrible on Hitchcock. I yeah. apologize to Hitchcock and you guys. So. But uh, so I've never seen Life is Beautiful. Watching this made me want to go check out Life is Beautiful because Life is Beautiful just seemed like it'd be homework. And then I saw this. And I'm like, dude, if Life is Beautiful is anything like this, I totally want to watch it. Did you feel um, like this movie would be homework before you started? Because I didn't possibly... know what this movie was because I, I didn't watch and I didn't see a poster. I didn't watch any trailers or anything. I just put it on. Man, I was actually kind of blown away by this one first of all it, it's weird because it's got a lot of heart with what the like you have a person developing a relationship with someone that they never even talked to they you know eventually see each other you know they they have a connection but it's kind of like a, a connection uh where there's no communication or no vocal communication at least in his relationship between him and the uh the guy in the guard tower 
that's across, you know, he's looking at him through his home. There's a part of this in the end where he raises a glass to him and I'm <laughs> bawling. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. But then I'm kind of torn on it too. And this kind of, this is kind of the, the push and pull with this movie. I'm kind of torn because dude, he's in prison and you're imprisoning him. And they, and they even, they even kind of developed that as well. Yeah. There, uh, there's another scene where uh, the guard tower guys got to do something he really doesn't want to do. And yeah, uh, the, the, this movie's like really it, it has a lot of heart to it, but when it gets uh, when it gets intense, it gets intense in a very emotional way. Just like I mentioned, but I didn't kind of detail. This movie's great. I hope everyone gets to watch this. Yeah, I think Bruce, you mentioned the word magical. I think the most magical thing about this movie is one of the themes of the film is obviously it starts with the boy take being led off from his village in a trunk. Because if he's right. if the trunk's open, he'll be killed along with everyone else. I think we're assuming the mother is actually holding him at the beginning. And she's saying, no matter what happens to you, always smile. So when you start off a movie like that, you think that the director, he or she, would have that license to have all these saccharine, syrupy, honey-filled moments with him making people smile. Nope. It doesn't. It doesn't overplay its hand it doesn't get too over sentimental in fact eric was mentioning about the third act the final moments to me are very very subtle and inferred mm. and really well done and i think this movie is really magical because it doesn't go for the easy sentimental things that will make you cry you will have emotion and you mentioned evocative it is evocative because it underplays its hand a lot of times so any final comments regarding americazzi bruce or eric before we get the ratings no i mean look for this movie it's fantastic it probably will be streaming soon but i would say yeah if you have a theater that's playing it go check it out i mean i can imagine that this the score on this and watching it on a big screen would be amazing this is this would be a no-brainer i would say yeah so for me my i think this is room to grow but my rating initial rating for americazzi is four and a half stars eric holmes your rating on Americazzi. Do you like Rear Window? Do you like Shawshank Redemption? You will like Americazzi. Five stars. This one's a complete banger. There. Okay, Bruce Berkey, your rating. Uh, five stars as well. Wow. Huge, huge praise for Americazzi. Again, Michael A. Gorgian is the writer, director, and lead actor. A lot of people say whenever someone does that, it seems like a vanity project. Sometimes vanity projects are not so vanity when they're actually really well done. And it doesn't seem like a it just feels like a very love, uh, labor of love inspired piece. Yes, Bruce, I'm sorry. No, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I think it's this is the opposite of a vanity project. I feel like it is truly a labor of love. This is probably a story he really, really wanted to tell, and he probably did whatever he could to get it out there. It looks really good too. So I don't know oh. how he got everyone on board for it, but it's it's a quality production. This yeah. also not not in like tone or story or anything, but uh, kind of like how Jim Cummings stars in his own movies. But the characters that he plays, it's like, who else are you going to get to play that? He nailed it. This is kind of the the same same deal with Americazzi. Who else are you going to play that part? Okay, so that is high round across board praise for Americazzi again Friday in New York and L.A. But at New York's Quad Cinema and L.A. MC Glendale. But hopefully, with good word of mouth, Americazzi will be playing in more theaters. And down the road, hopefully, will be available on digital, on demand, streaming, etc. And I'm just glad we're the early birds on this film, and we're going to spread the word on how great Americazzi is. 